Sega Genesis is without a doubt one of the great game consoles of all time, with a deep library of games spanning every genre. In the past, I've looked at some of the great shmups, platformers, and even just great games in general, and there are still a mountain of awesome titles to talk about, so on today's episode of 5 Games, I present 5 more great Sega Genesis games. Mickey Mania The Timeless Adventures of Mickey Mouse is a platformer developed by Traveler's Tales and released in North America in 1994. The game is unique as the stages each represent one of Mickey's classic films. Mickey Mania does a lot of things really well. First, the controls are responsive and the jumping is precise and accurate. Mickey can bounce on enemies or throw gems at them, giving you a nice option for taking down foes. Next, there is a lot of variety between the levels. Again, as each level represents a different film from Mickey's history, they all look completely different. But not only this, they all play different. Some stages require platforming proficiency, others require enemy dodging, and still others require a healthy dose of memorization and trial and error. Graphically, the game is rather amazing. The color used in each area does a good job depicting a certain mood. The sprite work is top-notch and Mickey moves with elegance and grace. There are also plenty of special effects, like this tower section giving a convincing sensation of 3D, and the moose chase sequence looking like some SNES Mode 7. Pretty amazing stuff. If you're looking for something cheap and awesome for the Genesis, Mickey Mania is where it's at. Road Rash 2 is the second game in the Road Rash series. Expanding on the first game, our adventure now spans the entire United States, including Alaska and Hawaii. Unchanged, however, is just about everything else. Road Rash 2 has you starting in the back of a pack of 14 other racers, racing through the back roads of America, attempting a top 3 finish, so you can move on to the next area. After completing the 5 races, you buy a new bike and then do it all over again. What makes Road Rash 2 so great is the gameplay. Despite the sluggish frame rate, the controls are smooth and there is a nice sensation of speed. Blasting down the twisty back roads is still as fun as ever, and of course wailing on your rivals with your fists or weapons is just awesome. After Road Rash 2, the series started adding digitized sprite work, so Road Rash 2 is a great entry point if you've never played the 16-bit games before. The roads also feature plenty of hills and jumps, allowing for some intense air at times. Finally, the soundtrack is a nice upgrade over the first game. There is plenty of Genesis twang, but the pseudo-rock sounds manage to be charming rather than annoying. Above all else, Road Rash 2 does an awesome job making time disappear. Few games will suck hours away from my weekend, quite like the Road Rash series. Most consider Streets of Rage 2, or sometimes 3, to be the best of the Streets of Rage trilogy, and I tend to agree. However, the original game is still fantastic. First and foremost, the soundtrack is one of the best to ever grace the Genesis. The music transcends the hardware, and isn't just good video game music, but good music period. No qualifier needed. The electronic, dance, techno, and even subtle hints of rock and jazz are an absolute treat to listen to, and really elevate the overall experience. Thankfully, behind the awesome soundtrack is a solid beat-em-up. While a bit bare-bones today, the moveset proves to be sufficient, with a few different attacks being better than others depending on the situation presented. Things are technically sound as well, with responsive controls making performing attacks a breeze, and solid collision detection making Streets of Rage a lot of fun. The simple moveset and lack of any real problems make this first Streets of Rage title easy to recommend, especially if you're not well versed in the genre. Add in some detailed graphics, an amazing soundtrack, three playable characters, and cooperative play, and the first Streets of Rage is a must own.
As time wears on, folks seem torn on the very first Sonic the Hedgehog. Some find the lack of a save system, occasionally bad enemy and hazard placement, glitches, subpar bonus stages, lack of a spin dash, and linear levels a bit off-putting, and claim Sonic 1 to be a bit overrated. While I respect these opinions and appreciate a new generation's perspective, I find the original Sonic to be one of the finest games ever created. The controls are still phenomenal. Sonic moves ridiculously fast, but the momentum is spot on and the controls never feel slippery. Additionally, the jumping is perfect with excellent mid-air controls. The level design also does a tremendous job matching the awesome speed and excellent jumping, with some levels taking advantage of Sonic's speed and others instead focusing on the jumping mechanics. It makes for an incredibly enjoyable experience few games of the time could hope to match. The graphics and sound are equally great and just what Sega needed to help fight off the impending Super Nintendo launch. The detailed sprites and bright colors are still visually appealing, and the soundtrack proved in competent hands, the dated sound hardware in the Genesis could still blast out some high-quality tunes. Above all else, Sonic the Hedgehog is a ton of fun to play, and mandatory for every Genesis collection. Last and certainly not least is Blizzard's The Lost Vikings. This is a puzzle platformer, forcing you to switch between three different characters with unique abilities to clear each level. Eric the Swift has the ability to run, jump, and bash down walls with his head. Olaf the Stout is slow, cannot jump, but wields a shield. This shield can block enemies and incoming projectiles, as one would expect. But he can also hold it above his head to create a platform for Eric and use the shield to slow his descent. Finally, Balog the Fierce has a reasonable pace, cannot jump, and yields two weapons. The sword can be used to slash foes, while his unlimited arrows can be used to flip switches and take down foes across the screen. What makes this game so great is the thoughtful level design. The solutions to puzzles are not always obvious and force you to really think about how to use each Viking's unique abilities to clear obstacles. Few games give you the aha moments The Lost Vikings provides, and it really is a breath of fresh air. On top of this, despite having three characters to account for with multiple moves and plenty of items to collect and utilize, the controls are somehow simple and never feel overwhelming. The Lost Vikings is truly a treasure, and one of the very best games on the platform. So there you have it, five more great games for the Sega Genesis. Now, this is not a definitive list, nor is it intended to be a best of, and the Genesis has far, far more than five great games, so be sure to leave a comment and let me know which Genesis games you enjoy.